Welcome to Biblical Greek. Today we're going to tackle the adjectives. Now don't let that intimidate you. Adjectives are not that intimidating, but they are very important. They compose or they form one of the most important words in the study of the Greek New Testament. So adjectives cannot be ignored. Now what is an adjective? Very quickly, an adjective is a word that is joined to a noun to define its meaning or to kind of explain a little bit more about the noun. That word adjective, okay, the word adjective comes from the Latin, the Latin adjectum, which means to throw something at. Adjectum means to throw something at. So you're throwing a word at a noun. Let's say the noun is man. The adjective is good. You're throwing good at the man to make him the good man. Or um, kids, again a noun, you're throwing many at it to make it many kids. So adjectives serve that purpose. Now very quickly I want to take you through a couple of things about the adjectives before we run forward. Adjectives can uh, uh, function in many ways in English uh, very quickly. Uh, they can be adjectives of quality, as in the one I just mentioned to you, the good man, uh, or adjectives of quantity, where we're talking about much fruit or how much. Uh, that's where uh, adjectives can function in telling us uh, the uh, answer to the question, how many. Or adjectives can be demonstrative, demonstrative in the sense of which, as in these women, or that car, uh, that is also an adjective. Sometimes adjectives can be possessive. Our Father in heaven. So our possessive is also an adjective. Or adjectives can be interrogative where you're talking about whose image is this? Whose image? Uh, sometimes um, uh, we also have the identical adjective, the same, like the same men came to Peter. Same is an adjective. It's, see, anytime you throw something at a noun to explain it better or to identify it better, uh, that is an adjective, adjectum. So I hope that will stay in your mind. And I'm sure you sh it should know that uh, if you've studied grammar of any kind. Now, there are two primary uses of an adjective. And this we will come back to towards the end of uh, this video. And the first is what's known as the attributive, okay, attributive adjective. And the second is the predicative adjective. So you have two different kinds of adjectives, the attributive and the predicative. Now, the attributive is... Um, like saying the blind beggar. Blind in that case is an attributive adjective. It's giving a quality to that noun, to that subject. The beggar is blind, the blind beggar. Now, <laughs> I kind of said that earlier, the beggar is blind would actually become the predicate. Uh, because now you have a verb, the to be verb, that is telling us what the beggar is. Uh, the beggar is not doing something. The beggar is not going somewhere. The beggar is blind. So in that case, the adjective becomes predicative. Okay? So the blind beggar, okay, the blind beggar, uh, here blind, is attributive. The beggar is blind. Here, the blind is predicative. So keep those two things separate. Now, there's also one more, and Dr. Black in his book kind of talks about this, is the substantival use. So I'll put that down here. The substantival use use of the 
attributive where not much is said other than the adjective is functioning as the noun. The adjective is functioning as the noun. It's not modifying a noun. It's not serving as a predicate to the noun. But the adjective itself is the noun. For example, only the good die young. Think about that. Only the good die young. Who, what is the good? Only the good um, chocolate dies young? Or only the good what? The good men. It's assumed that it's the men. So in that case, uh, it's functioning as a substantival adjective. Only the good die young. It, it's assumed that it's good men die young. So keep these three things in mind. And I know when we're talking about such things under adjectives, uh, you probably haven't heard it unless you've kind of encountered this in college-level grammar, but this is something you need to learn. Your mind is going to be stretched because you're learning things you probably never heard before. Adjective, it modifies the noun. Something you throw at the noun to explain it better, to define it more clear um, and, or clearer. Attributive, the blind beggar. Predicative, the beggar is blind. Only the good die young. In that case, the good functioning as a noun is a substantival adjective. Now, having done that, let's look at the adjectives in the Greek language. Now, in the beginning stages of biblical Greek, our focus is going to be on the first and the second declensions only. Later on, we're going to talk about the third declension. And then there's also the mixture between the third and first declension and some contractions. But don't let that overwhelm you. We're going to leave that alone for now. Right now, if we're following Dr. Black's book or J.W. Wenham's book, uh, we're focusing mostly on the first and the second declension. And those endings are just like the first and second declension noun endings. So you can rest at ease knowing that you don't have to learn something brand new, some new endings, because keep in mind the adjectives, the ending of the adjectives match the number, gender, person of the noun they are modifying. So the adjective endings match the number, gender, person endings of the noun. They're the same. Now, sometimes there may be some differences depending on the word, but still in those cases, you can figure it out that, yes, that is a nominative, singular, masculine, and same thing over here, even though the ending might be a little different. But let's not get there uh, too early. Let's begin with the first in the second declension um, adjectives. All right, so we're focusing on the first and the second declension masculine, feminine, neuter adjectives. And so let's begin. Let's begin by starting with the masculine. Now keep in mind, again, we're focusing in on those whose stems, those adjectives whose stems end in a consonant other than are other than rho, because there are, you know, you know the vowels, a, e, 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 o, u, okay? Those are vowels. Consonants are the rest of them. B, g, d, e, uh, not a, but uh, other than uh, those vowels. So we're focusing in on adjectives whose stems end in a consonant other than the r, what do they look like? What are those endings? Again, very similar to our second declension. Masculine, first. So let's begin with that. Here is our chart for nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, and dative. And again, we're focusing on the masculine first. And so now we have, uh, here we have the singular and the plural. 
and this is keep in mind is the masculine the masculine stem uh, ending in consonants other than R. So here we go. Very simple. Os, oi, a, oi, on, us, u, on, o, ois. Same exact stem uh, endings uh, or um, the endings as you find in the second declension masculine nouns. Exactly the same. How about the feminine? Well, for the feminine, we go to the A endings. Remember in the first declension, A endings? That's what you have when you're dealing with uh, this right here. So let's write that down. The same kind of chart we're going to make. Here we have singular, plural. All right. And again, we have the same nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dated, but this time we're focusing on the feminine endings, the feminine endings. So what do they look like? A, I, A, I, in, us, ace, on, A, ice. That is your feminine ending for first declension, um, uh, second declension adjectives. Now, let's go to the neuter, the neuter ending for uh, these kind of adjectives with a consonant ending other than R. So let me write that down over here. This is for consonant endings. Uh, except for R. So I hope that helps you understand which group we're talking about. Okay? So now neuter. Neuter is very simple. It, it matches the second declension neuter. Uh, first the chart. We have singular, plural, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, and dative. So nominative, Vocative, accusative, genitive, dative. What do the endings look like for uh, these adjectives that end in a consonant in their stem other than R? So it's on, a, uh, on, a, uh, on, a, uh, u, on, o, ois. So there you have the consonant endings for the first, second declension adjectives, masculine, feminine, and neuter endings. So what changes when it has an E or an E or an R ending? Remember, we excluded R from this chart. Consonants minus R in the stem ending of the adjective. So what happens when you have uh, something where it is stem ending in A or E or R. In that case, the only change that is happening is in the feminine. So in the feminine, instead of A, now you will have the A ending of the first declension uh, noun. So let's write them down. The R uh, endings of the first declension are uh, nouns. What do they look like? Uh, I, uh, I, on, us, us, on, uh, ice. That's the only thing that changes when you have adjective stems ending in A, E, or R ending. The masculine stays the same. The neuter stays the same. It's only the feminine instead of the A 
it takes on the ah. That's the only thing that changes in that chart. So there you have the first declension, masculine and feminine and neuter endings for the consonants, minus R, we already looked at them, and the A-E-R ending. By the way, before we move on and start talking about the predicative, uh, the attributive or the substance type we'll use, just want to quickly mention that Dr. Black does talk about the two termination endings. Sometimes some adjectives have only the masculine and the neuter endings, and those masculine neuter endings look just like our second declension masculine neuter endings. Remember, the first declension is only uh, masculine and feminine, no neuter. So uh, the two termination endings are not that complicated, same exactly as the second declension, noun endings, masculine and neuter. Now let's talk about those three uses of the, art, of the adjectives that we will find when we study the Greek New Testament. And you find them a lot. So this is important for us to grasp so those three uses that we began with the English examples. Now we're going to look at the Greek examples. So very simple for us to remember. When the adjectives has the article, it has the article, it is in the attributive position. So, attributive position, attributive adjective, yes, there is an article. Okay, there is an article. And where will this article happen? Well, it can happen uh, in front of the adjective. The adjective is before the noun, or if the adjective is after the noun, it will still have the article with it. For example, uh, let's say um, the good prophet. So it would be ha agathos prophetes. Okay, ha agathos prophetes is the good prophet, but this can also be ha prophetes ha agathos. This is the attributive use where the noun is being qualified. What is a prophet like? Good prophet. The, the translation would be the good prophet. Again, this is the attributive use because it has the article in front of it. It is the attributive use, ha, whether it's here or here, doesn't matter as long as the article is there. It is known as an attributive adjective. But the second use is the predicative adjective. Remember, the attributive adjective has the article with it, whether it comes before the noun or after the noun, it carries the article with it. But in the predicative adjective, adjective, there is no article, no article, none. So what does this statement look like? Well, it looks like this, ha prophetes, agathos, In this case, the verb to be is not there, but you're supplying it because in this situation, the translation is the prophet is good. Now, there is no to be verb here. It's absent, but it doesn't matter in that case. 
because the adjective doesn't carry the definite article, it is missing uh, that you supply that verb to be, which is, it, this happens a lot, it is the prophet is good. Now, this can also come like this, agathos, ha prophetes, and again, the translation is exactly the same. The prophet is good. Again, keep in mind, no article. No article means it's a predicative use. Article is there, it's an attributive use. If it's an attributive use, then it is good prophet. The good prophet. Whether the adjective comes with the article before the noun or the adjective comes with the article after the noun. But if it's a predicative adjective, no article at all. Now the adjective can come before or after the noun, but either way, the translation will be the prophet is good. Now, it's in some places, the esthin will be provided, is, or it may not be. The verb may not be there, but that's okay. You still have to translate it as, as the prophet is good. The third use, as we remember we talked about, is the substantival use. The substantival use where the adjective is actually functioning as the noun. The adjective is functioning as the noun. So what does that look like? It is not qualifying anybody. It's not giving us the state of being of that prophet. The prophet is good. In this case, the substantival adjective, the substantival adjective example would be, again, hoi or ha agathos. The good, the good man. What if it's plural? Hoi, aga, toy, the good men. Just like only the good men die young. It's assumed that they are men based on the gender. So there you have the substantival use of the adjective. Again, we're only focusing on the first and the second declension, uh, three termination at times, but sometimes also two termination endings, uh, masculine, feminine, neuter, or masculine, neuter, the feminine is missing. And we focused on, of course, the attributive ending with the article, the predicative ending without the article, and the substantival uh, adjective, uh, which uh, simply has the adjective functioning as the noun. Later on, we'll talk about the third declension adjective endings, or the mixture of the third and the first declension endings, and of course, some other combination as well. But this is our lesson on the Greek adjectives.